welcome students to a new discussion on the topic of properties of gastrointestinal tract enabling in drug absorption process previously we had a discussion on ph partition hypothesis and also the influence of diffusion flux on the effect of change in the ph so in this session we are going to discuss about the various physiological effects produced by the gi tract upon the absorption of the drug so let us start the discussion as we know that the gi tract is one of the longest pathway in our body which enables the digestion of food it also enables the absorption of the drug by the most reputed pathway known as the oral route of administration it forms a major bulk of extravascular administration of the drug the various factors which generally influences the absorption of the drug involves the ph condition the motility and the presence of the food in the stomach sometimes even the diseased condition of the stomach or the intestine influences the absorption of the drug let us go in details as we know the most fascinating feature of gi tract is the variations in the ph condition as we know in the stomach it is having a ph of around 1 to 2 when it goes down when we go down to duodenum there is a slight and sudden fluctuation of the ph which increases to around 6.8 so there is a sudden increase in the ph which is generally encountered by a neutralization process which occurs at the duodenum by a pancreatal infusion which is being secreted at duodenum by pancreatic duct the drugs majorly which are being taken orally undergoes absorption in the small intestine around 99% of the drugs are absorbed through duodenum and ileum generally as we know you can see up here the ph plays a drastic change so it's as i told you in the stomach it is 1.4 to 2.1 in duodenum it goes to 6.8 further when we go to uh, duodenum it is around 6 to 7 uh, in ileum it is approximately 6.5 then it moves to the colon and the colonic ph you reach to around 7 to 8 so there is a much change in the ph and it increases in increasing or ascending order till it reaches to the colon generally ph can even drop at colon it is found that ph can drop to as low as 5 in colon due to the microbial digestion of certain carbohydrates producing short chain fatty acids as i said the other factor that is the food also plays a very important role in the stomach as you can see the presence of the food in the stomach or your gi tract can enhance or change the ph than it in the fasting condition the other conditions like composition of the meal the physical state of the meal temperature of the meal also the volume and the content of the meal influences the extent of gastric motility and the gastric emptying time 
generally the after the food there is found that the pH may increase or it is capable of decreasing it totally depends upon the nature of the food the food generally like cucumber spinach broccoli onion ginger garlic are influenced by enhancing or increasing the pH on the other hand buttermilk cheese uh, fruit juice egg these are responsible for lowering the pH so generally after the food the feed or the fasting state it also plays a very important role in the drug in the uh, conditions of your GI tract generally it is found that in emptying empty or fasting state a 200 ml or a glass of water requires a half life of around 0.1 to 0.4 hours for tablets or solids generally takes in a fasting condition for gastric emptying of around 0.5 to 3 hours whereas with food it may increase even up to 13 hours fatty foods requires longer time to move and hence it slows down the absorption of the drug as I am discussing regarding the absorption process so you know the maximum absorption process of the drug takes place in jejunum or ileum that is the small intestine over a period of 3 to 5 hours within a pH range of 4.8 4.5 to 8 so your small intestine including jejunum and ileum plays a very important role in the drug absorption specifically you should remember that the weak acids the weak acids you know what do you mean by weak acids so the weak acids generally undergoes absorption in jejunum and the weak bases undergoes an absorption in ileum so please remember this thing generally a weak acid undergoes absorption in jejunum and weak bases undergoes absorption in ileum now when I'm saying absorption the absorption is enhanced or facilitated by lot of finger like projections which enhances or increases the surface area of absorption so generally you can see the jejunum or ileum has a surface area of around 60 meters square so how it is possible the 60 meters square this area what they are showing up here is due to the the finger like projections the foldings of the inner lining of the lumen which we call it as villi so villi are the finger like projections which plays a fascinating role in the absorption you can see the absorption this will I composed of a layer of epithelial cells of a thickness of around uh, 15 micron so these are the epithelial cells which plays a role in the absorption of your food materials so it also plays a role in the drug absorption generally the villi is of 1000 micrometer in the length and 100 in thickness so this uh, epithelial uh, cells are further composed of finger like projections which are called as microvilli and the microvilli is uh, plays a very very important role in the absorption so this is the diagram of your epithelial lining so you can see the epithelial lining and it is having further finger like projections which are called as microvilli the microvilli you can see there are uh, what you can say thing uh, we can say branching of glycoprotein known as glycocalyx the microvilli com it comprises of goblet cells which produces mucus along with the mucus and the glycocalyx it produces an unstired layer of around 30 to 100 microns within the lumen 
maintaining a pH of around 5.2 to 6.2 the mucus which is being produced the mucus which is being produced generally comprises of oligosaccharide rich in sialic acid and this too maintains the microclimate pH so what is microclimate pH we'll discuss in the next part of our discussion so for time being it enables to maintain the microclimate pH which enhances the absorption process which enhances the absorption process the intestinal cells are joined so you can see these are the cells which are joined by tight junctions and the pores enable the diffusion of drugs which are smaller than 200 Dalton probably they should be water soluble now if we go for how a drug is getting absorbed so primarily passive diffusion if you ask what is the major route primarily it is the passive diffusion that's right now there are three ways by which this passive diffusion occurs first one this is called as the transcellular diffusion that is the drugs will be in the luminal fluid it will undergo a partitioning so it is based on pH partition hypothesis the log p value should be optimum such that it should not get trapped within this lipid barrier and it should be able to pass through it such that it enters into the cytosol of the epithelial cells so this type of movement is called as a transcellular diffusion the next one is just now I discussed that is paracellular diffusion that is along the tight junctions the drug should be somewhat water solubility it should have lower lipid solubility and greater water solubility and enhances the movement across the uh, pores so generally it, through this pathway the drugs less than 200 Dalton are favorable if it is more than 200 to 500 or 600 Daltons the transcellular diffusion is favorable now if the uh, drug gets trapped so it may be carried on just like floating it may pass through this inside the cell so this pathway is called as the lateral diffusion so this is another hypothetical pathway through which even the drugs may pass inside the cell so these are the three possible or probable pathways that is generally followed by a drug during the absorption process so this is what we have a discussion uh, regarding your uh, uh, role of GI tract in absorption of the drug in the later class we will also continue discussing regarding the tight junctions and the microclimate pH